Right. Hi, everyone. Um, hey to everybody who is watching on the live stream. My name is Leanne Ali. Um, I do like to refer to myself as your resident podcast queen. But for day today's session, I am the commissioning producer for BT Sounds Audio Lab. And I am here to give you guys a bit of a flavor about what Audio Lab is all about and give you some information on why you should apply, the type of content and people that we're looking for. And also this is your opportunity to ask any questions that you have about the scheme and what's involved. And I'm really excited to share this with the Rise and Shine community. And I really hope that there's a bunch of you out there watching that will be applying for Audio Lab. So I'm gonna start off with giving you a bit of context as to how BBC Sounds Audio Lab first came about. So I'm going to rewind all the way back to last year, May. It was a weird time. It was a very strange time. May 2020, we had just started the beginning of what we thought was going to be a very short journey in this pandemic. Um, we were also in the midst of the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement after the murder of George Floyd. And for the first time, I felt a lot of our whole society was having conversations about race that we had never had before. And within the audio industry, that took its form of the Equality and Audio Pact, which was started by Renee Richardson at Broccoli Content. And at the time, there was tens and hundreds of production companies that signed up to this Equality and Audio Pact. And what it is, is five very simple um, standards that the audio industry should adhere to in order to make audio a more equal place for us all and it's very simple things like you should pay your interns you should make sure that the people that are working on productions are representative and you shouldn't take part in panels that aren't representative of the world that we live in so um i and a few of my colleagues were kind of sitting watching this really great thing kind of spread really really quickly a whole bunch of our BBC suppliers had signed up to this pact and we brought it to our management internally at BBC Sounds and was like well if all of our suppliers have signed up to this audio pact then why can't the BBC sign it or we should also be signing it so we pushed that up internally and the BBC did sign the Equality and Audio Pact, but then that opened a much bigger conversation as to what more can we do to support more diverse creatives on BBC Sounds? Because at BBC Sounds, we recognise that we have the platform and power to affect change, tell stories that matter, and give people opportunities. So there was a group of us within the BBC Sounds commissioning teams that came up with this concept that we now call BBC Sounds Audio Lab and it's all about amplifying next generation podcast creatives so like some of the podcasts that I've shown here so like Stories That Stick, Joy's World, The M Word Podcast, Native Immigrants and Busy Being Black we would and even Sadia and Monty from No Country for Young Women we would love to find podcast creators like this but also amplify them give them the additional support investment and development to take their content to the next level and really tell stories that matter. So Audio Lab is part of BBC Radio's 12 million priority spend that was announced last year on diverse content and stories. And through BBC Sounds Audio Lab, this means that we can better reflect our audiences across the UK. We can surface diverse stories, produced by diverse production teams and talent and really nurture that talent. We can create value for all. And what's really special about this program is that the creators will get paid and the creator will also be able to retain their IP. And this is really important because as an individual um, working with big platforms, not only the BBC, but when you work with big platforms in general, there is always a conversation about the IP split. And often it's quite hard to negotiate. Often you can go into a 50-50 split, often more. And often when you're working with big platforms, the platform has first refusal on any further content that you want to make. However, this program is different because we acknowledge that this is a development and accelerated program and we want to empower the creators that we bring on board to make their best work. And 
we think that is best done by allowing the creator to own their IP. We also hope that this program will empower a new wave of content suppliers. We hope that the creators that come on board may want to start their own production companies um, later down the line, and they may in turn start creating content for the BBC at a later date. But there are much bigger ambitions around Audio Lab. And another thing I say that the reason that this is so important is because it really breaks down the barriers to entry to getting a podcast commissioned by BBC Sounds. So the traditional route is that you have to, if you're an individual, pitch your idea through a production company, which is one of our already existing approved suppliers. And that production company would then pitch the idea directly into BBC Sounds or whichever part of the commissioning, podcast commissioning part of the business that fits into. The issue with this is that as an independent creator, if you're not already connected to the audio industry, it can be very difficult to navigate that sector as a whole. And again, you sacrifice that level of IP at every stage of the progress process. And moreover, there are only so many commissioning rounds that we have open each year per part of the business. And what's more, and what you'll probably notice as well with the content that's coming out of sounds at the moment is that our strategy is bringing in bigger names to make content so that we can bring more audiences into the BBC Sounds app. The reason that that is happening is so that we need to prove that the we are bringing in audiences to the Sounds app in order to enable to keep funding it. So while that strategy and that thinking is valid, it does pose the question, well, where is the room for up and coming creators if it's not within sound and public service, then where is it? Which is another reason why Audio Lab is so important because it really allows us to develop up and coming talent as well as produce diverse stories and uncover untold narratives that we don't usually hear in our mainstream media. <clears throat> So Audio Lab is for creators who have the following. This is the type of people that we are looking for. We are looking for people who have at least one year of content making experience. Um, that can be audio, that can be radio, but it's not confined to just that. We are also open to content creators. If you're a YouTuber, if you make video content, social content, perhaps you're a TikToker, I don't know. But if you have a year's worth of content making experience, uh, you are eligible for this scheme. Um, this isn't an entry level scheme. We're looking for a little bit of experience because we really want to empower you to make the content that you want to make. And there are other entry level schemes out there that are really, really great as well, such as Multitrack and the Spotify Soundup Bootcamp. You need to have a podcast idea that can be produced within three to six months. Um, this program is open to all, but we are really encouraging those from underrepresented groups to apply, which includes those who are Black, Asian, ethnically diverse, those from low socioeconomic backgrounds, those who identify as part of the LGBTQIA plus community, um, and those who have a disability. Um, we are also not, I also have to say that this program is not open to BBC staff. So you must not have been employed by the BBC for more than 12 months. However, if you have freelanced for the BBC before, or if you've been a casual worker, you are eligible for the scheme because we do understand that we, a lot of great talent comes through our doors in a freelance capacity. And you must have not been previously commissioned to make a podcast for the BBC at producer level or above. So this is what is on offer. And this is really exciting because we've never done anything like this before and given this level of support to creators that we bring on board. Uh, but this year we have the opportunity for six creators. We will, the creators will be paid, be paid on a day rate to make your podcast series for BBC Sounds. It will live on BBC Sounds, you'll license it to Sounds and it will also live on RSS. You will also get given a budget to make your podcast. As I said earlier, the creator retains the IP. We will pair each creator with a production exec from BBC Audio, which is our in-house production unit. And they will act as your production mentor and 
guide you through the whole production process. There will also be a bespoke training program. So there'll be several days worth of training, which will be provided by the BBC Academy, which also includes yes, speakers and hands-on workshops to really equip you with the skills that you need to make your podcast. Um, in addition to that, there'll be wider track wider sector training and support, full access to BBC studios and equipment, and we will also give you a full marketing and promotional plan for your finished podcast, just like we would do with any other podcast that we make for sounds. So if you think that offer sounds really good, and if you have a podcast idea that you've been sitting on for a long time and you're thinking, hmm, I think I should actually apply for this, this is how you submit your idea. So. We're asking you to tell us about your podcast idea. We would like to hear it in an elevator pitch and a short summary. It doesn't have to be a fully formed idea, but just make sure you can tell us as much in as much detail as you can about your idea, why it's important and why you think that you can make an impact. There's also an opportunity within the application to describe how your podcast will sound. Tell us what the format is. Give us an idea of the tone style and genre of the podcast we're really not looking for specific genres we're really open to genres so you could do a conversation based podcast a documentary investigation you could do a soundscape you could do a fiction you could do a drama as long as you think it can be made within the time frame of three to six months we're really not looking at specific genres and formats we really are just looking for really innovative and creative ideas we really want to uncover underrepresented voices untold stories and new perspectives within the application you'll also be asked to give a five minute snippet of audio that will give us an idea of what your podcast will sound like so this can be a snippet of a conversation it could be like an intro to one of your episodes um anything that you think will demonstrate the potential of what your podcast can sound like if audio is not your forte, you can also send in a visual sample of what your podcast may sound like. And lastly, we're also asking you to send a voice note describing uh, what your passion, why you're passionate about the idea and what inspired it. Because we also understand that sometimes it's difficult to get your idea across on paper. So this is your opportunity to tell us why you're passionate about what you're making, why you think um, it should be commissioned and your inspiration behind the idea and then lastly these are the things that we're looking for within the application so this is what we'll be kind of scoring against so we're looking at practicality so practically can your idea be made within the time frame of three to six months we're looking for podcast ideas that are innovative and creative we're looking for podcasts that are very distinctive. So to what extent does your podcast, is your podcast different or are there very similar podcasts that are already out there? We're also looking at resonance across the UK. So to what extent does your podcast connect with audiences from around the UK? And this does mean that if you wanted to look, if you wanted to, if your podcast is targeted at a very niche audience, then that is all good as well, but also think about how this can um, connect to a wider audience. And lastly, we are also looking at diverse narratives. So we really want to see through your podcast how much you are highlighting diverse narratives. So to sum up, BBC Sounds Audio Lab is a brand new accelerator programme where diverse podcast creatives are supported to do their best work, deliver new stories, voices and perspectives for BBC Sounds in order to authentically reflect BBC audiences across the UK. And if you want to find out more information and apply, you can go on bbc.co.uk forward slash audio lab. I'd highly recommend you looking on the website. There's a ton of content on there. Do read through the FAQs for any of your frequently asked questions. Do also read the terms and conditions. There's a lot of really useful information in there as well. And if you have any further questions, you can email us at audiolab, audiolab at bbc.co.uk. That is the right email address. So for now, I am going to answer some of your 
questions. So I'm just going to read out some of these questions. So the first one is from Astrid. Are you able to join the scheme if you have a podcast that is already up and running? <clears throat> Very good question. So yes, you can. But the caveat here is that you can't submit an idea for content that you've already made. So if you want to submit an idea for a podcast that already exists, it has to be an offshoot or spin off to the podcast that you already have, because the series that we will commission will be a limited amount of episodes. It won't be an ongoing series. So you can do a spin off um of the content that you've already made but it has to be original content it has to be something that you haven't already made before and is there an upper age limit no there is no upper age limit you just have to be over 18 and have the right to work in the UK there is a question from Olivia here and so if you are from an underrepresented group but your podcast idea has nothing to do with the theme with that theme is that still counted as representation Yes, of course. Yes. And I really want to highlight the fact that when we say underrepresented groups, untold stories, that means both in front and behind, front of and behind the mic. Because you're from an underrepresented group does not mean you are limited to telling stories about that and about identity. Like that's not the point at, at all entirely. Really, we need to normalize people like us from underrepresented groups just doing stories that matter to us and that can literally be whatever you want um what I always say is in this context think about how you can take a theme that is relevant to a mass audience and use your lens of your identity to bring that unique perspective so your podcast um doesn't the, there isn't a theme essentially the theme is not underrepresented groups, but we are looking to encourage those from underrepresented groups to apply. And we are really looking for untold stories and new perspectives. So I hope that answers that question. Um, also another follow-up question from Olivia, are the themes or presenter most important? Um, I would say the strength of your idea. So that could be twofold. If the actual idea is centered around the presenter and that presenter's story then that's a really strong idea um but if you're looking at a theme more general <clears throat> and your host is more like a narrator to that story then that's equally as valid as well we're really looking at the strengths of the ideas <clears throat> so we've got a question from the J and L podcast. Could a visual example be a TikTok? Yes, of course it could be a TikTok. And I think that's a very clever idea. So do get your application in. Um, Astrid also asks, what are the timelines like and the participation stages once you apply? So applications close at midnight on the 29th of August. And then we will go into the shortlisting process. Bearing in mind, this all really depends on how many applications that we get in, but I can give you like the provisional dates. So we're aiming to do all the shortlisting across September and interview our shortlisters in October, onboard and commission the creators beginning of November. And from November and December is when you start making the podcast, you do the training with us, and then that will continue until January, February, March. We're also conscious of the fact that depending on what type of podcast you're making, it may take a different amount of time to make than other styles. Like not all six creators are going to be on the exact same timeline, but they'll have from November to maximum March, April to complete their podcasts. But as soon as they finish, we're going to push them out. And so that is the timeline. And another question from Olivia. Does the podcast need to have a confirmed title? No, it does not. <clears throat> um, it would help if you added a working title because um, we all know that when you're creating stuff, the title is never the first thing that comes. It can literally come right at the end. So if you put in a working title, that would be really helpful. 
Um, another question from Olivia. Who are the team choosing the podcast ideas to go forward? So there is a, well, we're putting together a selection committee at the moment, which is made up of a variety of um, BBC staff that are work across editorial and podcast, but they're also of different seniorities as well. Um, so we've got a real mix of people from within the business that will be going through these ideas because we also know that it's important to have that representation on the other side who are choosing the ideas, which is why, yes. Um, so a question from Mary. What is the criteria when your team are choosing the podcast to go forward? Um, so as I mentioned in the deck that I showed, the main choosing criteria that we'll be using is looking at practicality. So practically, can the idea work as a podcast and can you make it within the time frame? We'll also be looking at innovation. So how innovative and creative is the idea? We'll be looking at distinctiveness. So to what extent is your podcast different from existing podcasts that are already out there? We'll be looking at resonance across the UK. So to what extent can your podcast connect with various audiences around the UK? And we'll be also looking at diverse narratives. So to what extent does your podcast highlight diverse narratives and um, diverse perspectives? So are there any other questions? I should also add actually, that we've been doing masterclass sessions every week for the last three weeks. We've got two more coming. And these are all sessions to help you become a self-starting podcaster. And we're building a really great community within that as well. So we've had sessions like how to be a great interviewer. We did that with Richie Brave from One Extra Talks, Moya Lothian McQueen from Human Resources Podcast, and also Rose Rever from T2's Podcast. And the, uh, the second session we did was um, how to tell how to bring a story to life through sound with sound designers Ben Brick and Axel Cacoutier. Those two sessions are already available to watch back on bbc.co.uk forward slash audio lab. This week's session was um, looking up podcast formats beyond the conversation and different ways to tell a story. And for that session, we had Mabin Azar from Hometown Podcast. Ali Adlington from Vent Documentaries and Jacob Roberts Menzer, who is the co-creator of Dem Times Podcast, which is an audio fiction podcast. That should be up on the website to watch by the end of this week. And we have two more events. They are going to be next week, Wednesday, and the following Wednesday, both at 5.30. So next week, one is about teching your podcast remotely. And that is with Ali Razakani from Station Sound at BBC Sounds and Sylvie Carlos, who is a freelance podcast producer and the last session we have is on breaking stereotypes and finding your podcast voice and we've got Liyin Kasani from Honest Tea Talk which is a podcast and also a YouTube show Poppy J from Brown Girls Do It Too and also Joy Ado from Joy's World Podcast so if you go onto the Audio Lab website you can have a watch back of the ones that we've already done and also uh, sign up for the, for the next ones Right, so also looking at the other questions that are coming in, will there, what would, where will the training days be? So that is a good question. And also would transport costs be covered? Yes, transport costs will be covered. In an ideal world, we'd want to do a couple of training sessions in London at New Broadcasting House, uh, some in Birmingham, in the mailbox, that's another big hub for us and also in Salford. But we don't know what the Rona is going to be saying in a couple of months time. So it could all be virtual as well. So it's, a bit, it's too early to tell, but we're really hoping that we can do it in person in a couple of different um, BBC bases around the UK. Because this is the other thing as well. Whoever, whatever creators come through this programme, they don't have to be based in London. They can be wherever in the country and we're going to pair them with relevant production execs within their regions as well. So, pick a question from Dave. If you have a lot more years experience than one year, is this for you? Or are you looking for early career, but with some experience only? So um, we've outlined on our website and within our FAQs that we're looking for people with one to five years experience. So five years maximum. So 
we're already looking for people who are fairly early-ish in their audio career, but have a little bit of experience. Um, we're really looking to help those who have kind of faced kind of some blockers, been able to take their content to the next level. So between one and five years experience is what we are looking for. Okay, are there any other questions? Ah, I'm good to hear some people are signing up because, <laughs> do, yeah, do let us know if you're signing up. It'd be really, really great to just see how many people come through this program. And if you have any further thoughts or ideas, um, yeah, send us an email, audiolab at bbc.co.uk. Any other questions? Ah, a question from Jake. Am I allowed to ask someone? Am I allowed to ask some people to help contribute to the show, record some of their life remotely? And if so, is there a budget for these contributors also? So for the successful creators, it will be up to you to decide how you smartly um, and wisely spend your budget. And each creator will have the same budget and you will be assisted by your production exec as to how to use that budget wisely. So um, yes, if it is relevant, you can use your budget to um, pay your remote contributors. But I also have to say that it's not very common that we usually pay contributors in the podcasting space although it really depends on what sort of content that you are making and what you're asking your contributors to do so in a word yes um you will have creative control of your budget as long as you spend it wisely um and yeah so thank you um also thank you to mary she says she's signing up as well which is great we love to hear it um yeah any other questions this is your time to ask all the questions this is your final call um, but like I said, oh, we have a question from Kat. So the question is, if shows don't fit within what you're looking for, but do have legs for the BBC, will they go forward internally following this process? Yes. So that's kind of part of the reason why some of our selection committee are within the podcasting slash editorial slash commissioning space. Um, and we are very much with the idea that if we see an idea has legs but it's not quite right for audio lab for whatever reason we will push that on to relevant commissioners and they may even just pick it up themselves and get in touch <laughs> um another question from astrid you mentioned that one of the criteria is residents across the uk can i clarify what i mean by this yes i can and i'm going to even look at something I've written down to give you an exact wording of what I mean by that. So, residents across the UK means to what extent will your idea, to what extent will your idea appeal to audiences in different regions across the UK? So this means that your idea can reflect or connect with different regions across the UK. It could be a specific region, it doesn't have to be. Um, but really where this has come from is that we ident we recognize that podcasting and a lot of like the creative sphere is very London heavy. And we really want to try and connect with and identify with audiences outside of that. But if your idea is able to connect with those audiences in some way, that is great. That doesn't mean to say if you're from London, we're not going to look at your idea. That's not it at all. But for example, I'll give you a really good example. If you are building a podcast, say you're making a documentary, think about the representation of the contributors that you're bringing on board. Thinking about 
not just their ethnic background but where are they from the country the thing about podcasts as well is that it's all audio so it's so nice to hear different accents so and when you do that as well you're gonna get different perspectives so think about how you can bring in voices from across the uk into your program and and then from the jnl podcast what would social media look like i.e instagram could you please just cal- clarify what you mean by that? Do you mean in terms of marketing the podcast? Because for that, we will use the relevant social media channels to push out your podcast. So definitely BBC Sounds. But if it connects with more of a Radio 1 or One Extra audience or Asian Network or Radio 2 or 6 Music or World Service or something else or Radio 4, then we can also leverage those um, social media platforms to push out the content of the successful creators. <laughs> um, let me scroll up, I've got some more questions coming in. Um, if you have more or less experience, have already published a pilot, et cetera, and wish to pitch, would you recommend pitching to this or is there a better way to pitch? Um, I mean, it really depends what the podcast is I think if you're at pilot stage I think that is actually a very good um starting point to pitch into audio lab because you'll need to submit some audio anyway so pitching in the trailer that you've already made I think we're actually at a really good stage to pitch to audio lab so that is what I would recommend um because like I explained earlier pitching into other parts of the business is quite difficult if you are an independent creator so i would recommend that i'm also going to say as well i feel like not a lot of people know this but like this is public knowledge if you want to find out who the podcast commissioners are for the different parts of the business so there's pop hub which is radio one one extra asian network radio two and six music radio four uh world service and five live then if you literally search uh, BBC Sounds podcast commissioning, it's one of the first search results that comes up and it tells you who all the commissioners are, tells you their email addresses, tells you what open rounds they have coming up. So you can understand the type of content that they are looking for and get in touch. I mean, listen, anybody on the internet is accessible. Drop an email and see if you can issue yourself, get a response. But also... <laughs> That is if you wanted to pitch directly into um, sounds. But like I said, as an independent creator, it is very difficult. So I highly recommend pitching into Audio Lab. So Spark asks, if you're one of the six, are you allowed to document the journey publicly? Yes, of course. We would absolutely love that. And we are planning to document the journeys as well we kind of yet to figure out how we're going to do that and what we're going to do with that content later down the line but we definitely definitely encourage you to document the journey publicly question from Lindsay: does the one you experience have to be at a company or can it be producing podcast audio content on your own yes it can definitely be producing podcast content on your own Um, It could be your own podcast, you could be producing independent podcasts, it could be voluntary work, you could be doing community radio. Um, So yes, it does not have to be our company, it could be on your own. Um, Oh, massive thank you from Kat, so thank you very much. And another question from Olivia. Was student radio count as relevant experience? Yes, 100% student radio is relevant experience, Um, so we'd love to see that. And I'm just going to go back to that question from the JNL podcast. So the question was, what would social media look like in terms of marketing? So when we put together marketing plans for podcasts currently, we have a few different touch points that we can leverage at the BBC. And that is social media, like I mentioned, with all of our relevant brands, like radio brands. There is also on-air trails. So that is kind of like the content as that you hear on the radio we can do that we can do in pod trails which is the same thing but within um, our other existing podcasts so we'll do that for podcasts that have a similar relevant audience there is also digital so um, we can feature podcasts on the homepage. you can also 
pitch to write articles for homepage as well and link back to your podcast because homepage has such a huge number of traffic coming to the site every day and when I say homepage I mean bbc.co.uk and there's also things like tv squeezes so at the end of a program <clears throat> um you'll usually always see like a not always like a what's coming up next but sometimes it's like a an ad for BBC Sound or a program on BBC Sound so that's something that we can do as well <clears throat> and we also have a dedicated press team that will um do a lot of press for us that will push out your podcast specifically as well so that can be anything from kind of pitching you for interviews or pitching the creator for interviews or getting your podcast featured on different lists and things like that um so yeah we've got a lot a lot at our disposal and a lot of teams fully equipped to um make the podcast as successful as it can so yes i hope that answers your question and are there any more questions any more for any more <clears throat> okay i'm going to give you guys a final minute to get in your last questions and then i think we'll wrap up so as i said applications for BBC Sounds Audio Lab are live. You've only got a couple of weeks to get your applications in. So the deadline is the 29th of August at midnight. We will not be extending it. So please do get your application in. Don't leave it to the last minute. You need to tell us about your podcast idea, submit a snippet of audio, and also send us a voice note about telling us about the inspiration, about your idea, and why you're so passionate about it. <clears throat> We've also got a couple more masterclasses that are coming up. Um, the next one next week is on taking your podcast remotely. And the following week, it's all about breaking stereotypes and finding your podcast voice. So you can sign up for those via Eventbrite, but you can also find them on the website. And all the information you need about applying is on bbc.co.uk forward slash audio lab. Like I said, do make sure you read the FAQs and terms and conditions because that would give you a lot of information that you need to know. And if you have any further burning questions, you can contact us at audiolab at bbc.co.uk. Um, I think this is a final question that's coming from the JNL podcast. Question is, if we wanted to give opportunities to contributors from across the country, can they work remotely? Thinking of students, absolutely. Honestly, I, like in reality, that's probably you're probably going to have to do a lot of the work for this remotely, depending on what COVID is saying. Um, but yes, you can give opportunity to contributors across the country. And that's not just, you know, for the podcast. Say if you had a graphic designer in mind to make your podcast cover and they live kind of the other side of the country, you can bring them in. Um, if you have like a sound designer or you've got a friend that makes beats and you want them to do the music you can bring them in like this is also your opportunity to put your people on and bring people in that you would really love to work with to work on your podcast if they've got the relevant skill set um because we're bringing you on board as a freelancer and when you are commissioned to make content for sounds if you're a production company you decide that team you decide who you're working with the only person that we're going to give you is your production exec so um we can help you build that team, but you also have free reign to bring in the people that you want to bring in as well. So, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I really hope that uh, this got you guys excited. And I hope that we'll be seeing some of your applications flooding in. Um, so, yeah, I think we are going to wrap up for now, unless anybody has any more final, final questions. Um, I will say thank you very much. Thank you very much for all tuning in. Thank you very much for having me, Sarah. And I hope to see you all at Horizon Shine very soon. <laughs>